Welcome to Padre Pio, The Complete Story. I am Father Louis M. Solcha, Parlamite. My assistant is Tassi Amato. This will be done with a kind of accent. After all, Padre Pio was born in South Italy. Pietro Cina by Maria and Grazio Forgione in 1887. He lived there for all his youthful life, but he spent a lot of time in town. He was baptized in this church, small church. And one day, Grazio, his father, took him to see a shrine, and there he saw a little baby that was crippled. The mother was crying. And he prayed, and the child was healed. So that was the very first miracle. He spent time in the military, but because of health, he was dismissed. Finally, he was ordained in this cathedral and was sent to San Giovanni Rotondo, where he spent the following 50 years. That was a deserted place, but Father Pio changed it into a beautiful city. He meditated a lot, and the first time he experienced transverberation, which means an angel appeared who transfixed his heart. Later on, Jesus appeared, and he said, I want to give you the stigmata. But he said, no at least invisible and he got the invisible stigmata but they were very painful finally one day in the choir praying in front of this crucifix in the church at San Giovanni Rotondo he got the stigmata the hands the side and the feet these are the hands of Padre Pio while he was saying mass they bleeded, but Padre Pio survived, though he lost about one cup of blood every day. Three doctors examined the stigmata. They found out no possible explanation. There are many miracles that Padre Pio performed. Some are not recorded. I would like to point out to you few who are astounding. The first one was, he was called one time to a lima beans field, infested by bugs. He went through it, he prayed, and all the bugs exploded. The second one was cured a young lady of bl total blindness. The third one, a young lady, a mother, brought in a basket a dead child. Padre Pio prayed over it, and the dead child became alive. The other one is my town, Milano. A man was standing on the sidewalk when he heard the voice of Padre Pio telling him, Run, run, a bomb is falling. So he ran, the bomb fell, and the friend of Padre Pio was saved. Two more astounding miracles are one of the by location. Location means to be in two places at the same time. He was teaching Bible class to seminarians in the monastery. One day to call the seminarians of the monastery to the Holy Land. That has been proven scientifically because the sandals of the seminarians were covered with dust only found in the Holy Land. The other one is about American soldiers. In San Giovanni Rotondo, was stashed 
a pile of bombs. So the general sent airplanes to bomb that place. But the airplanes were diverted by a monk, they say, that appeared in the sky, diverting the airplanes. So the town was spared. These pilots, after the war, went to see Padre Pio, and he greeted them saying, you wanted to kill us. The, the other one, the beautiful miracle is the baby Jesus. The baby Jesus appeared in the arms of Padre Pio many times. It was seen by many people coming down these steps in the sacristy, carrying Jesus, baby Jesus alive, full of light. This is the most beautiful gift that God gave to Padre Pio, the gift of consolations. Padre Pio was not superior, never. He was not a bishop, he was not a pope, but he built a huge shrine to people who suffer, the hospital, called the Casa. Casa means a house, to alleviate the sufferings of people. He succeeded to build it. He charged the doctor to start the work. The work of the hospital is not finished yet and he staffed five nuns orders to come and staff the hospital of uh, San Giovanni Rotondo. The nuns are caring for the sick in the different ministries, even at the desk. The hospital is now under a bishop appointed by the Pope. Father Cast Bishop Castoro came to visit one year our prayer group. The hospital has also a robot. The robot is called Mario. And Mario goes around, answers questions, and delivers medications. In this deserted place, Padre Pio built a huge hospital. Here we have Padre Pio talking to doctors, visiting the sick. M many nurses are totally highly dedicated and lately 33 new nurses have been hired to serve at the hospital. The hospital is a monument to humility, is a monument to charity, is a monument to caring for those who are sick. Padre Pio meditated a lot on the crucifix, and during the night, he sweat blood, the blood of the passion. He drenched many night shirts, some of them have been preserved, by Maria Bissio, who was the one in charge of washing the clothes of Padre Pio. Here we have a nice shirt, a second nice shirt, a third nice shirt, and some of the stained socks that he wore during the night. The devil, however, had a fighting with Padre Pio a lot. And he appealed to him many times. The devil one time beat Padre Pio so badly in his room that Padre Pio could not say mass for three days. And you see on his face, the wounds at the forehead, the eye half closed, the beard almost plucked out. Padre Pio said, I almost felt like I was dying. However, beside the devil, Padre Pio had enemies. One of the enemies was Father Gemelli, 
who founded the University of the Sacred Heart in Milan, my town. And he checked the wounds of Padre Pio and reported to the Pope that Father Pio was a fake. The other enemy was the pastor of San Giovanni Rotondo. So the Pope suspended all the spiritual activities of Padre Pio. He was prohibited to say mass in public, to preach, to hear confessions, to write to people. So Padre Pio spent two years in the monastery saying mass in a small room. When the people of San Giovanni Rotondo feared that Padre Pio could be transferred, they put guards with rifles. The rifles are called lupara. Lupara means guns to kill the wolves that was prowling on the sheep. And they guarded him like a precious treasure. Padre Pio had many other gifts. One of the gifts is that he saw every day his guardian angel. Here we have Padre Pio telling his guardian angels, counseling with the guardian angel what to do. Padre Pio was obedient. Sometime, however, the angel did not help Padre Pio, especially when he was beaten up by the devil. He told to you and to me, when you want something, please send to me your guardian angel. Padre Pio did many other works, institutions. Some of them are for people visiting the sick. Some people for research. Some buildings for guests, but especially for retreats. He asked nuns to come and staff those retreat houses. When he got older and he was in a wheelchair, he had the idea of building a place for elderly priests. So the place for elderly priests is still in construction. Some other works are that he established 18, 18 centers for children, spastics, crippled, need a special gift, fragile children, and he had taken care by nuns and specialized nurses. He had many as asylums. In Italy, asylum means kindergarten. And he worked very hard to see that the children are well taken care of. Padre Pio followed the example of St. Francis of Assisi, his founding father, and having great devotion to the crucifix and to the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist was his daily bread. He said Mass with great devotions to our Mass. But people stayed. During Mass, he was very intense. Crumbs fell from his hands. One time, he had to chase the devil away who was sitting on the altar. During Mass, he was so intense that he cried because Jesus Christ is offended. Another devotion of Padre Pio is the rosary. He said hundreds of rosaries. One time it was said that he said 24 rosaries in one day because of Nepal, people need prayers. So Padre Pio had always the rosary in his hands. And he said to you and to me, the rosary is the shortcut to heaven. He spent hours in confessions. 
and he chased even people away. It was rough. Even an actors and actresses were going to confession but did not have intention to change. My pastor of my town visiting Padre Pio, he was praying when he saw Padre Pio coming out, bolting out of the confessional, chasing one beautiful lady, an actress, out of the church. You are a sinner, stay out, be washed. It's raining, be washed. I converted her. So, Father Pio spent and converted a lot of people in the confessional. One little story, beautiful about confessions. He told the lady, lady, you had an abortion. Your son was slated to become a pope. Repent. Father Pio had outstanding, famous converts. This is the actress who repented, who was washed by the rain. She came back and went to confession. Here we have Beniamino Gigli, famous singer. When he went to visit many times Padre Pio in the garden, Padre Pio asked him, please sing the song, Mama, and Padre Pio sang the song. Mama, solo per te la mia canzone vola. Mama, and on and on. And Padre Pio loved it. And he thanked Gimena Mio Gili, who became not a saint yet, but almost. Here we have a famous comic who was exchanging, exchanging jokes with Father Pio. A very famous convert is Italia, Betty. She used to come on a red motorcycle. She was a die-hard communist and she taunted in front of the plaza, shouting on the window of the choir of the church, bad words to Padre Pio. Padre Pio talked to her, converted her. She died in the hospital at San Giovanni Rotondo, converted. Other very beautiful people are listed here, but the most important are the spiritual children, people who follow the example of Padre Pio. Padre Pio made many saints. The last one is Genoveva, just made a blessed. She wrote many times to Padre Pio, consulted with him. Padre Pio guided to not to become a saint, but a great saint. We have blessed Natale. John Paul II, Bartolo Logo. This young lady, 14 years old, she's lately to be made a saint. She consulted a lot with Padre Pio. We have also a very famous saint, Gemma Galgani, who is a saint now. Saint John Paul II, visited many times Padre Pio. Pius XII is hoping, we are hoping that one day we'll be made a saint. We have a senator who became a saint. Founders of our religious orders who are now slated to become saints. Padre Pio insisted on his spiritual children to really Practice unity with the divinity. Amen. Padre Pio work continues through the spiritual children. Here we have Dr. Angelo Sanguinetti, who was appointed on the spot to build the hospital. And he did. Other spiritual children 
are on the way to be made saints. To be a spiritual child, we have to say the rosary every day, spiritual communion, at least 10 times a day as Padre Pio did, and to follow the commandments, the laws of the church. Here we have Brother Modestino. I talked to him twice when I went to San Giovanni Rotondo and I begged him to pray for our prayer group. He promised. I cast the crucifix the Padre Pio have given him to bless us. So, please, to be a spiritual child means to become a saint like Padre Pio did. Amen. This is the book of spiritual children of our prayer group here in San Diego. They made promises to say the rosary every day, follow the commandments, love the church, say the spiritual communion. Father Pio said the spiritual communion 10 times a day. We have over 500 names up to now. Why? Because Padre Pio said, I am staying at the pearly gates of heaven, waiting for my children to come in. Padre Pio died 1965. He is enshrined now in a beautiful new church, very modern, and Pope Francis visiting the tomb. When he died, they have many roses. And here we have a rose from his funeral. A rose from his funeral. Donated by Maria Piscio, who collected a lot of relics. We are concluding by saying that two Americans were very outstanding in helping Padre Pio. Maria Peripayo was called the Americana, who was catered, helped Padre Pio in many ways, but especially the soldiers, American soldiers. Here we have Luisa De Martini. Luisa De Martini, who raised a lot of money when the hospital was built. She raised money for the beds to fill the rooms of the hospital. I believe she collected 500 golden stars for each bed that she had collected. Maria Bisio, very important to us because she gave to us a glove of Padre Pio and she was in charge of washing the clothes of Padre Pio. Something very beautiful and important is that she donated also a pillow on which Padre Pio prayed because his stigma was hurting. But she saved a lot of the stuff that Padre Pio drenched with his own blood meditating. This picture about Padre Pio in the coffin has a few words very important. This is Maria Bisio who donated this palm. On Palm Sunday, Padre Pio carried this palm. She donated to our prayer group. And the words written here near the tomb of Padre Pio were, the palm of victory is given only to those who fight the devil. We have here the real glove that Padre Pio wore because of the stigmata. It's a first class. And we have a certificate that is authentic here. The family of Paul Amato donated to our prayer group. I use it. I pray one time over a young child to be born. Though people suggested that he, she should be the mother where cancer was cured practically instantly. The child was born. Her name is Annie. 
And I am so happy to know that many people should avail of the glove of Padre Pio to be cured. This picture of Our Lady of Purity still hangs in the room of Padre Pio in front of his bed. And Mrs. Bizio, Maria Bizio, said Padre Pio cried a lot, but in bed was looking at these pictures. For because of the many sins that he was hearing in confession. And that is why Padre Pio continued to enthuse us and enlighten us about purity, virginity, and chastity. Padre Pio also continued his work by having established Center for Research attached to the hospital, places to study tumors, transplants, and all these buildings will be research. The hospital received many awards. Our prayer group in San Diego is made up of practically of three groups. One at Our Lady of Rosary Church, one at San Anne, one in the military service. 1991, Father McGovern and Celina Florentino, Father McGovern, Celina Florentino, started a prayer group 1991 with 12 people. Now it's grown to over almost 400. Here is all the prayer group in the church of Our Lady of the Rosary. The prayer groups are all throughout the world. They are directed by a central committee. In every country, 30 countries have spiritual directors. They're all listed here. Padre Pio continues work through books, books collected by people. One of the books collected by people is Diane Allen, who with her husband, Ron Allen Deacon, directed this prayer group for many years. Padre Pio continues his work through letters. They are collected. Many more letters have been found. And for sure, let us remember what Padre Pio said, that he will spend heaven doing good on earth. The other motto, which is very beautiful and important to every prayer group is pray, hope, and don't worry. God bless you real good. Amen.